Welcome to MedEasy. In step 1 exam, it's not necessary to know all the anatomical details of the heart. You just need to familiarize yourself with the most commonly tested concepts. First, let's go through some scans of the heart as those can show up on exam. This is a CT scan of the heart. It's taken on the axial plane just below the level of the main pulmonary trunk. You'll notice that the left atrium is the most posterior part and the right ventricle is the most anterior part. Because the left atrium is the most posterior and closest to the esophagus, if the enlargement of this chamber occurs, it can compress the esophagus and cause dysphagia. This enlargement can occur in some conditions like mitral stenosis and in patients with moderate to severe hypertension. Left atrial enlargement can also cause Ortner syndrome, which is hoarseness of the voice due to recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, secondary to this compression. To have a better understanding of this, let's discuss the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. This nerve loops around the aortic arch behind the ligamentum arteriosum, then ascends to the larynx, and innervates the intrinsic muscles of the larynx. And if you remember from laryngeal anatomy, the extrinsic muscles are responsible for moving the larynx, for example when you swallow, whereas the intrinsic muscles are responsible for movements of the vocal cords and voice production. And because the aortic arch is immediately adjacent to left atrium and left recurrent laryngeal loops around aortic arch, enlargement of left atrium can damage the nerve supplying the intrinsic muscles, leading to hoarseness of voice. We also notice in this CD that the right ventricle is the most anterior part of the heart, which is why it's most commonly implicated in traumatic injuries. This is a chest x-ray image. We can see the heart is bordered inferiorly by the diaphragm and by the lungs on either side. As for the heart itself, we can clearly make out its outlines. The left cardiac outline, called cardiac contour, is made by the lateral border of left ventricle whereas the right contour is made by the lateral border of right atrium. Below the right atrium we have the right ventricle, and above the left ventricle is the left atrium. But as we mentioned, the left atrium is the most posterior part of the heart, therefore it's not directly visible on x-ray, as it doesn't form part of the normal anterior view of the heart. However, it can change the left contour of the heart if there is left atrial enlargement. We can also make out vascular structures in this x-ray. First, the aortic knob, or aortic knuckle represents the distal part of aortic arch, and if we continue downward, we can make out the descending aorta. Then we have the superior vena cava and the azygous vein. Also, those faint lines around the heart represent pulmonary vascular markings, and it's not part of cardiac x-ray. The pericardium is a fluid-filled sac that surrounds the heart and the roots of major blood vessels that extend from it. If we look at this section from the heart wall, we'd see that from inner to outer, we have the endocardium, a thick myocardial layer, then we have the pericardium, which consists of three layers. Visceral pericardium, also called epicardium, then parietal pericardium, and lastly fibrous pericardium. Between the visceral and parietal pericardium is a space called pericardial space, that normally contain 15 to 50 milliliters of serous fluid running through it. Pericarditis causes referred pain to the neck, arms, and one or both shoulders, mainly the left one. The coronary arteries are the first branches of the aorta. There are two main branches, the left and right coronary arteries. At the bifurcation of left coronary, two branches arise, the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. The left anterior descending supplies the anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum, anterior lateral papillary muscle, and anterior surface of the left ventricle. In left circumflex, circum is Latin and it means around. This branch is named circumflex because it courses around the atrioventricular groove from anterior to posterior aspect of the heart. The left circumflex can give off the posterior descending branch and people with this vascular pattern have what's called a left dominant circulation. The right coronary artery supplies atrioventricular node and sinoatrial node, which is why an infarct in this area could cause nodal dysfunction leading to bradycardia or heart block. The right acute marginal artery, which is a branch from the right coronary, supplies the right ventricle. The right coronary gives off another important branch called the posterior descending artery, this occurs in 80% of people, and this pattern is called a right dominant circulation. When the posterior descending artery is branched from the left circumflex, it's called a left dominant circulation, and when the posterior descending branches from both the left circumflex and right coronary, it's called a codominant circulation. The posterior descending supplies the posterior one-third of interventricular septum, posterior two-third walls of the ventricles, and posterior medial papillary muscles. Let's talk more about papillary muscles. The papillary muscles of the heart are pillar-like muscles seen within the cavity of the ventricles only, not atria. They attach to the cusps of mitral and tricuspid valves via cordy tendine. Those papillary muscles can rupture after myocardial infarction. There are five papillary muscles, anterior, posterior, and septal. Each of these three support the three cusps of tricuspid valve, and the remaining two, anterolateral and posterior medial, 
support the two cusps of mitral valve. The anterior lateral muscle has a dual blood supply from left anterior descending and from a branch of the circumflex artery, while the posterior medial muscle has blood supply only from the posterior descending. Therefore, in most patients, it is the posterior medial papillary muscle that could rupture as a complication of MI. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, Medizi, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.